So, you're thinking of purchasing one of these little fluff balls, or you've newly acquired this bouncing ball of trouble. Either way, this video is for you, because in this video I'm going to be going through 20 things you need to know about these little guys before you purchase them. So before we get started, just a quick introduction. My name is Ali and I have owned chinchillas for over 25 years and I also breed chinchillas and I've been breeding them for nearly as long as that. Now I do own a lot of chinchillas and this one right here, this is Maestro. Wouldn't you? So yes, let's get on with the video. So number one, chinchillas are huge long-term commitment they really are they live exceptionally long for a rodent whereas most rodents live like between like rats live two years hamsters live two years mice don't live particularly long these guys can live 20 years plus now i have some that are in their mid-teens so 16 and 15 lots that are 15 years old and i've had chinchillas in the past that have lived to late teens early 20s now, depending on which sources you go to, some will say that their average lifespan of a chinchilla is 10 to 15 years, but that's actually incorrect. They can live much longer than that. They can live longer than cats and dogs. So if you're thinking to yourself, I want a chinchilla, think about the long term. So if you've got any plans for the future, like you want to go to college or university, or you know, you want to go traveling and you don't think you're going to be able to look after a chinchilla for that period of time then i would say don't get a chinchilla or get or go to a rescue and get an old chinchilla to begin with because they are a real long-term commitment you really have to think to yourself are you going to be able to look after a chinchilla for 20 plus years so yeah that's the first one exceptionally long lifespan so it really is a big commitment chinchillas do not cope well with heat they have extremely dense fur they have one of the densest furs of any land mammal and because of that they are designed to live in cold environments so during the summertime when it's really really hot you have to think about how are you going to keep them cool because if they get too hot it will result in heat stroke and potentially death so it's really important that you've got to work out how are you going to keep your chinchilla cold during during the hot months now in the us i know that aircon is a bit more of a standard thing in your houses in the uk it's really not like that at all most houses do not have most houses do not have air conditioning so i personally have a couple of portable aircon units which I use to keep the air in my chinchilla room cold. But you really do need to think about this in advance. How are you going to keep that chinchilla safe and comfortable during the summer months? Because during the summer months, it's like having a winter coat that you can't take off. So yeah, it can be extremely uncomfortable for a chinchilla and also eventually can lead to heat stroke and death. So yeah, really important if you're going to get a chinchilla, Think about how are you going to keep it cold in the summertime if where you live it does get hot. Number three, chinchillas are rodents and they have teeth that continuously grow. And like all rodents, they need things to chew on in their cages, toys, wood blocks, lots and lots of things for them to chew on. If you don't give them enough things to chew on, then they're going to have dental issues. So yeah. So a big part of owning chinchillas is being able to provide them lots and lots of things for them to chew on and lots of things to keep those teeth in check. Number four, chinchillas are social animals. In the wild, they do actually live in herds of up to 100 in a herd. So really, ideally, you want to get more than one. Now, same-sex pairs are the best. It doesn't matter if they're female and female and male and male doesn't really make a difference um, but yeah they do like interactions with other chinchillas and that being said there are some chinchillas that don't get along with other chinchillas and there certainly are cases where a chinchilla does better on their own there definitely is that but generally speaking you would like to get them a little friend for them but as I say some chinchillas seem to cope better with being on their own than others number five chinchillas are messy they poop 
and I mean they poop a lot up to 200 times a day and the poop doesn't generally stay in the cage they do flick it out a lot of the time and they can be quite messy so if you have a particularly pristine house maybe a chinchilla isn't for you because yes they are fairly messy however it is quite easy to clean them but yeah they do poop everywhere and it's hard to litter train chinchillas you can litter train them for peeing because they do generally pee in the same place but for pooping they will poop anywhere and everywhere they can number six chinchillas really shouldn't get wet you shouldn't bath them in water they actually bathe themselves by rolling in fine dust um, and yeah so they shouldn't get wet you've got to give them dust baths regularly. Okay, so number seven, chinchillas are crepuscular, which basically means they are most active at dawn and dusk, but are also active at night, which means that if you want to interact with your chinchilla, it's going to be in the evening time. During the day, they will mostly be sleeping. So if you want a daytime pet, this is not the fella for you. If you want an evening time pet, then most definitely, yes. Number eight, following on for number seven, chinchillas are actually quite noisy at night. Now, during the day, you wouldn't even know you had a chinchilla probably because they are so quiet, but at night time, when they get active, they will bang about their cage a lot. And this can keep people up. So if you want something that's in your own bedroom, then you might want to reconsider, you might want to put it in another, put your chinchilla in another area because they can get quite noisy with all the jumping about they do. Number nine, chinchillas can make some very, very strange sounds. On the whole, they're quite quiet. As you can see, this little boy is quite quiet, but they do make some very, very unusual sounds from time to time. And if you want to hear what the sounds they make, I have got a whole load of videos about chinchilla sounds, so go check them out but they do make some quite alarming sounds from time to time. So it's always worth checking up what kind of sounds your chinchilla makes, just so that when you get one, you're not overly concerned or worried or anything else about it. Number 10, chinchilla diet. Now a chinchilla's diet is very specific, but it is really, really simple. Now what you want is chinchilla pellets specifically designed for chinchillas and Timothy hay to give them and fresh water. That is it. You can offer them treats, but these have to be really, really sparingly and they have to be healthy treats as well. So treats are really kept to a minimum because they are treats. Now I know that with some pets, variety is the spice of life and giving them variety offers lots of enrichment to an animal. However, with chinchillas, it's really not. You have to keep everything as the same as you can. Any change to their diet can potentially lead to digestive issues like diarrhea and bloat. So you have to be really, really careful. If you want to change anything in a chinchilla's diet, you have to do it really, really slowly. Even to the point of where you've bought a new chinchilla and you've got their pellets that they've used and your pellets which you're going to use. If they're a different brand you want to mix the two together and gradually wean them over because that drastic change, even though it's just changing from one pellet to another pellet, can cause some digestive issues. So yeah, really really simple, don't want to give them any variety, don't want to give them any fresh fruit or fresh veg or anything fresh because it's bad for them. Basically stick to your Timothy hay, your pellets and the occasional healthy I like hay-based treats. Number 11, chinchillas do need time outside their cage, and this is purely for enrichment purposes, so they have somewhere different to explore. Obviously, it has to be done safely, so you need a safe area for them to do it. However, they don't need hours and hours. Hours and hours of time outside their cage for playtime can be quite dangerous for a chinchilla, um, because chinchillas can get exhausted, overheat, and can have seizures due to overexhaustion if you have them out for excessively long times. So stick to maybe 30 minutes a day. So stick to around 30 to 30 minutes to an hour outside their cage. They don't need any more than that. Any more than an hour, you're looking at 
potentially causing risk to the chinchilla. So number 12, if you have a young chinchilla, so a chinchilla that's under six months of age, it's best to not give them any playtime at all. Or if you do, make it very, very minimal because Young chinchillas have an issue with regulating their blood sugar and it can cause issues with them over exercising. So if you're going to let your chinchilla out, let it be for like 10 minutes or so, no more than that really, because it can get quite dangerous otherwise. So yeah. Number 13, chinchillas do live in burrows in the wild and therefore they do need lots of hides within their cage. Um, to make them feel safe so lots of wooden hides or anywhere where they can go undercover to make them feel safe and secure number 14 chinchillas cannot have plastic in their cage do not give your chinchilla plastic toys or plastic ledges or plastic bases in their cage if you have plastic in your cage you're going to need to cover it up with say fleece for example because if they chew that plastic that is really really bad for them because it can cause blockages and impaction and basically they can suffer a slow and painful death from that so you want to want to you really want to avoid that even if your chinchilla isn't chewing the plastic i would still cover it because chinchillas are a funny creature they may not chew something for years and years and years and then one night they might just start decide to start chewing. So yeah, really important to make sure that your cage is safe so no plastic. Number 15, chinchillas do chew. They will chew absolutely everything. It's part of their nature, they're rodents, they need to keep their teeth down so they will put their teeth in absolutely everything they can find. When you're giving your chinchilla out of cage time, um, expect some damage to walls, skirting boards, door frames, etc. If you don't want that, you can always put them in a chinchilla pen so it's a bit easier to manage their chewing, but they will chew on everything. No matter how many chew toys you put out for them, they will still gravitate to things that you don't want them to chew. So just bear that in mind. So number 16, you may have seen online pictures and videos of chinchillas being handled and being very cuddly. However, in reality, chinchillas are prey animals and can be extremely skittish. Most of them do not like being handled and would rather not be handled at all. They're not gonna be animals that you can have on your lap and they're just gonna sit there and cuddle with you and they're not gonna like being held. Fortunately, I do have one or two chinchillas that don't mind being held too much but even then on some days, they don't want to be held either. So yeah, it, they, they are quite skittish animals. So if you want something that's gonna be all cuddly, if you want a, an animal that's gonna be really cuddly and sit on your lap and you can stroke, this is not the animal for you. But they'd much rather have interactions on their terms rather than by you picking them up. Now, again, chinchillas are prey animals and sometimes they will bite it's not a regular thing and it's quite unusual for them to do so but they can bite from time to time especially if you've caught them unawares so number 18 chinchillas can get sick some of them are particularly prone to dental issues and really you've got to expect that within your 20 years of having a chinchilla you are going to need to visit the vet so it's really important you find a uh, exotic vet that deals with chinchillas pretty early on in owning a chinchilla because they will get sick from time to time and not a lot of vets know about chinchillas unless you go to a real exotic vet that specializes in exotic animals so yeah it you need to find a vet that actually knows what they're doing in terms of chinchillas and also you need to have a little bit of money set aside for vet bills. Now, I personally put a bit of money aside every month for vet bills that potentially could happen in the future. So that's the way of doing it. Or you could get pet insurance if you wanted to. So number 19, there are quite a few woods that are actually toxic to chinchillas, things like cedar and a lot of wood that is from stoned fruit like plum and cherry. And also, um, pine if it's not kiln dried. So really important, pine is fine for chinchillas if it's kiln dried. 
If it's kiln dried, I use pine shelves for my, for my chinchillas, but it has to be kiln dried. It's really, really important because otherwise it can be quite toxic for chinchillas. So just make sure if you're getting wood, just make sure it's a white wood that's been kiln dried because that takes away all the sap, toxic stuff that could be in the wood. Number 20, chinchillas can do a thing called a fur slip, which is where they actually release clumps of fur if they feel threatened. Now this is a defense mechanism that they use in the wild. So if they're getting caught by a bird of prey, they will actually release some of their fur. And so in order they can get away and the bird just gets a clump of fur. Now they can do this in captivity. If you pick them up wrong or you startle them, they can release some of their fur. It's not going to hurt them in any way. It's just a defense mechanism. Obviously you want to try to avoid fur slips, but they will happen from time to time, especially if you're going around trying to catch a chinchilla that, that doesn't want to go back in its cage, you can have fur slips. So yeah, just don't get freaked out if you, if you find that you're chinchillas released a clump of fur that's quite a normal reaction to a threat is for them to actually release fur. Chinchilla treats. There are quite a lot of chinchilla treats that aren't actually really safe for chinchillas although lots of people do actually feed them for chinchillas but in the long term they're not particularly safe so things like fresh fruit, fresh veg, anything like that is no good for them. Things like nuts and seeds are actually pretty high in fat, so long term that's not going to be good for your chinchilla. Short term, no it won't kill your chinchilla if you give your chinchilla a nut or a raisin, but long term it can have some long term effects on them. So really you want to keep it as healthy as possible for your chinchilla. There are a whole range of safe treats that you can give your chinchilla that are nice and healthy. But again, they are still treats to, to do it, so do it in moderation. So they're the 20 things that I can think of right now, but please leave a comment down below if you can think of anything else or something that massive that I've missed because I am an idiot sometimes and I do miss things that are just so obvious. Yeah, leave, leave a comment down below and please like this video if you like and subscribe if you want to subscribe because I do post a lot of chinchilla videos, some of which are educational, some of them are which are rather daft and stupid, so you get a mixture of both. So thank you very much and goodbye.